Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is going to be part two in a series uh, we just began yesterday, and uh, I think the title is Apologetics um, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. This is uh, a, a small paperback book that we are actually going to just read and discuss. So if you if you did not watch part one, um, I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. Obviously, anytime there's a series, um, if you just watch something out of context, it, it, it might not make as much sense as if you watch it from the beginning as, as designed. So uh, before we get started, though, uh, I have Brother Ted on the telephone, and uh, he'll be listening in, and he may uh, speak up sometimes if he feels inspired. Uh, and uh, Ted's YouTube channel is God's Truth Ministries. So if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe to his YouTube channel. And also with me, uh, I have Brother Joe. Uh, his YouTube channel is Sebastian Dresden. So I'm going to ask Joe to introduce himself, uh, say whatever opening remarks he wants, and, and then we'll be begin. Go ahead, Brother. Well, this is uh, Joe from the Sebastian Dresden channel. And I'm uh, very grateful that uh, Luke included me in this study because it's such an opportunity to make a difference, hopefully, even if it's the one or two people or 200 people. It's, it's just an excellent opportunity to uh, share faith and, and reasons for why we believe what we believe and uh, hopefully encourage people to not only study on their own, but to uh, uh, bring this study out to the people they know their lives that they're not believers. But I do hope Ted chimes in and really got some good thoughts from everything I've heard from him. So I know it's uh, uncomfortable sometimes to try to uh, speak on a hangout to a phone, but uh, I hope you get Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right, brother. Uh, how is How does my audio sound to you? Uh, your audio is fine. I, I, you can use a voice coach, but the, the electronics are great. <laughs> Well, I don't have the smooth, beautiful voice like Brother Scott, um, but uh, I'm doing the best I can with these vocal cords. He's got um, some nice dulcet tone tones. You know, you can tell he's a, a former professional radio guy. Yeah, yeah. I asked him about that once, if he was actually trained and developed that voice. Uh, and uh, he said, no, but it, it, it was just natural for him. But I know that some people on radio, you know, they they make quite an effort to develop a, a radio voice. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know why I have my uh, my video turned on, because I've been told that I have a, a face uh, made for radio. Uh, but the reason I was asking about my audio, uh, Joe, is that your audio is not 100% uh, as good as it usually is. Oh, well, let me work on that, Luca. It's usually an adjustment of volume. And so let me uh, bring this down. Is it any better now? Uh, not, not significantly. Okay. Is it any better now? No, not really. Okay. Well, I'm just going to leave it lower, and hopefully that'll help. I don't know what the problem is. Okay. Um, all right then. Um, now, I think that uh, yesterday, if I mark my page correctly here. Uh, we are on page 14 out of 128 pages. So why don't I just uh, continue reading? Uh, and as I said, if you're, if you're a viewer and uh, you didn't watch the first episode, uh, I mean, obviously, we'd like you to watch this live. But um, I think watching it from the beginning, uh, you have a kind of a foundation so that this will make a little more sense than just picking it up right here. But we're on page 14 from the book More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. And I'll read it. It says, at this point, a critic may interject that all these references are from others about Christ, not from Christ about himself. The accusation in the classroom is usually that 
those at the time of Christ misunderstood him as we are misunderstanding him today. In other words, Jesus really didn't claim to be God. So to back up uh, yesterday, uh, we discussed quite a few verses where the, the scriptures are, are declaring that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. And a lot of times people like Muslims um, and um, uh, you know other religions, uh, Buddhists, uh, uh, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, they uh, are misrepresenting the identity of Jesus. Uh, some say he's an angel, some say he's just merely a, a prophet, some say he's an, an evolved, enlightened uh, like guru or uh, um, but uh, the Bible says that he is eternal God Almighty and and we we probably discussed you know you know five or ten verses yesterday that uh, to make that point but now we're asking the question well what about Jesus himself did he actually declare that he is God uh, or, or or is are people just misunderstanding and and uh, he didn't really explicitly state that okay before I go any further brother Joe uh, what's your thoughts on that uh, well, my thoughts, what you uh, just said brought me back to uh, Walter Martin's book, The, the Kingdom of the Cults, and uh, I believe uh, it opened uh, with uh, all cults, all false religions, uh, all manner of unbelief is centered in the misunderstanding of the person of Christ and his revelation of the Father. So. Uh, Actually, if, if you understand who Christ is, then uh, you will accept what he said, and you will be saved. Uh, belief is is center or central to to the to our faith, and uh, God places a great emphasis on it. I'm reminded of when Peter he said, uh, "Who do you say that I am?" And uh, he said, "You're the Son of God, the, the Messiah." And he said, God revealed this to you. This is not a man. And I, I believe that the comprehension, or at least the apprehension of who Christ is, is a supernatural act. It's not just one of uh, accepting facts, but it's an actual drawing of the Holy Spirit, uh, which may not make sense to you if you're an unbeliever, but uh, to know who Christ is is to be saved, I believe. Uh, if you accept that you're a sinner and he is your savior. So uh, everything revolves around his claims. Yeah. Um, the, the claims and promises of Jesus uh, is really what uh, Christianity, that's the essence of what Christianity really is. Um, so, as you said, the cults and the false religions of the world, uh, they are erring in um, understanding and uh, uh, teaching correctly about who exactly Jesus is. And I, I think it's kind of part of the same uh, problem, but I, I'll, I'll kind of separate it here for a moment. And the other problem is uh, they err in what is the means of salvation. But the means of salvation is also wrapped up in part of the identity of who Jesus is. If we really understand and believe who Jesus is, the means of salvation is wrapped up right into that. It's all part of the same thing in that uh, if we understand that Jesus is eternal God, almighty, then then we can, we can understand the verse that says that uh, there's one Savior, God is the one savior so in other words if, if you cannot believe that jesus is your is savior unless you also believe jesus is god because the bible says uh, only god can save um, then uh, the, the the other thing is um not only that um, he's he's god and therefore he can has the power to save us but also that he is man because early on in church history, when they were debating and uh, writing the, the, the creeds 
uh, the early Christian creeds, um, much of it um, was, was uh, answering the question about who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Holy Spirit is, and, and somehow clarifying our understanding of this Godhead. And uh, I do think that it, it took them a long time to codify it and write it down and get it right in the creeds. And each creed expanded and, 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 and got more clear. And uh, they did an excellent job, I believe, in that respect. Hey, hey, Luke, Luke, can I, you often, uh, you've been training me for years not to venture into left field off topic, but this has just uh, came, come to my mind and I can't, can't kick it. Now, is it possible, do you believe, that a person can believe that Christ is the Son of God, is, is uh, uh, God manifest in the flesh, believe that they are sinners, believe that he died for the sins of all mankind, and then reject his free gift of salvation in preference to uh, not restraining their sinful lifestyle. For instance, uh, there, there's the old uh, uh, adage, it used to be more common than it is now, where a drunk would be in a, a revival meeting, let's say, back in the day, and he'd become convicted terribly about his sin, and he would realize that, that Christ is who he said he was and did what he said he did, but say to himself in error, you know what, if I accept this gift, if I bow my knee to Christ, then I can't sin anymore, or I, I in error, I'm saying, thinking, I, I don't want to accept Christ because it'll inhibit my lifestyle, and I love my sin. And while I recognize and I come to the epiphany that Christ is who he said he was and did what he said he did, I don't want to give up my heroin. I don't want to give up my homosexuality. I don't want to give up uh, uh, whatever it is, drinking or whatever. And so a person walks away saying, I'm not saved because I prefer my sin to that salvation. Now, granted, you don't have to give up your sin to be saved. You merely have to bow the knee and ask for the gift or accept the gift. You don't even have to ask. Just accept the gift. So can a person, in essence, be a believer and walk away unsaved? What, what are your thoughts on that, Luke? And I'm not trying to get us in left field, but it's, it's hitting my mind, so maybe I should say it. You're muted, Luke. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, if I don't mute myself, let me know immediately. I hate to, I hate to make a five-minute uh, uh, point and then realize later that it was muted, so. Yeah, I can't tell you to mute after the fact, so if you say something really silly, you're stuck. <laughs> um, but I think the final point is, is it possible for someone to uh, believe these things about Jesus, uh, and then, but does also say, uh, I, I don't wanna be a Christian because I would have to change my life. I'm not ready or willing to, change my life and give up my favorite sins and, and keeping in mind that you don't have to give up your sins you just have to accept the gift but in error not really realizing that you get clean after you get in the shower so to say that they in error say you know what i would i prefer my sin to to uh to my to a relationship with with god and walk away and not accept the gift of salvation is that possible well I, I guess it goes back to this question I've been asking for for um, decades now and that is uh, what is the bare minimum for someone to actually get saved uh, how much do they have to know and understand uh, how much do they have to agree to and, and uh, I believe that bare minimum is is really um, very small, and 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 that's why I believe that uh, the the premise or the the single verse salvation is is uh, a fact. A person uh, does not have to 
necessarily understand the deity of Christ, not only the deity of Christ, but some people would argue that they not only believe that he is the eternal God or the son of God, but they need to understand the Godhead perfectly, or, or at least as, as uh, uh, agree with their viewpoint on it, that uh, the God is triune and that there, there's so much, as I said, for the first few centuries of church history, this was the primary debate and discussion among the so-called church fathers and these, some of them were really great theologians and wrote voluminously about all this. And then they had uh, a, a one, not, it's not a conference, but a, a council, like the Nicene Council. And they, uh, uh, they, they, they have a council, they get all of the, the, the best theologians together, they'd have discussions and debates over this and then formed a consensus, which was called orthodoxy. Uh, and then they, uh, they would codify it in, in a creed. But so the, the question is, uh, how much do you have to have studied all that and understand all the nuts and bolts, all the fine points about it? I believe you don't have to understand very much at all. Well, yeah, I understand that, Luke. It's, it's, uh, Bill brought up a good verse yesterday, the Philippian jailer, and he asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? And, and, and Paul responded, believe. And you shall be saved. And but I, I it, there's a, a, a problem in my mind, and I'm not the theologian you are, I, but there's a problem in my mind with that because while we he while the jailer probably did recognize the divinity of Christ because of well known uh, controversy of the day, and he probably did recognize he was a sinner. Uh, and he probably meant to accept the gift. All of that was unspoken. What if, and this is a common thing, Luke, this is com more common than, than I think we easy believers uh, give it credit for. Uh, people will hear the gospel, believe the gospel, and say, I don't want that relationship with God because it will cause me to not enjoy my, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to give up my sinful lifestyle. As a matter of fact, uh, if I come to Christ, I realize I can come to Christ as a sinner and I don't have to change beforehand, but I don't want to change afterwards. I don't want him to change me into a boring, uh, no more parties, no more homosexual sex, no more opiates that I don't want, I don't want to lose the joy of my sin, you know, and, and uh, is simple belief enough without uh, acknowledging I want to accept that gift. Uh, this, uh, this point you're making here, uh, his historically, it was um, a really big deal to Augustine. Uh, Augustine was, was famous for a lot of things, and I'm not a fan of Augustine by any means, but uh, Augustine uh, delayed his salvation um, or because he said he said to help me to um, I want to be saved I forget exactly how it was phrased or where the line is drawn I think he was making the point that I want to be saved or, or I want to be righteous I don't want to sin but not yet uh, you know later right. later and, and that's, a common thing. that's a common thing in, in uh, many churches today because, you know, this, the pastors actually preach incorrect doctrine. You know, they teach people or they preach to people that they need to, like Ray Comfort, you need to agree to stop your sinning and come to the Lord. And so a lot of people are convicted. They, they have a, a realization that they're a sinner, that they need a Savior. But because of that error in messaging, they say, I don't want that. I, I can't quit my sin. I don't want to quit my sin. And then a step further, let's say a person realizes that the, the grace message is true and they don't have to stop sinning. They just have to bow their knee, acknowledge that they are sinners in need of a savior and accept the gift. But they know if they do, that it's going, God's going to convict them. They know that they're going to ha they have to change because they're a new creation. They're, if they're bowing their knee, they know they need to submit themselves to God. And they say, you know what? Uh, I don't want to submit myself to this God. It's no fun. 
and I'm young. I'll do it later. I'll submit myself to God before I die. I'm thinking 64. When I'm 64, I'll, I'll submit myself to God, accept his gift, and then I'll be cool because I have all my party and then all that out of my system. Now, that does happen, and I think a lot more than people realize. And I wonder, Luke, if you believe, and if you accept that he's a savior and you're a sinner, can you not be saved by saying, I don't want 